the story of TypeScript? Why TypeScript 1? You know this video should be one second long, right? It's not that I want to laugh. You know, like, uh, the, the video I really appreciated last time was, like, the uh, option video, right? Option uh, Andrew Burgess, right? Yeah, that was it. Andrew Burgess. He did a video on options. That was a great one. It was a great video to watch. What is TypeScript 1? All right. Let's try this one out, okay? Uh, the, uh, the story of TypeScript. I can tell you exactly why TypeScript 1. So I'm going to be a little bit disappointed if they don't exactly do it. It seems like wherever you look nowadays, there it is. TypeScript. 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 In fact, TypeScript is so pervasive that Bill Gates himself is even familiar with it. But the question isn't if it's popular. It obviously is. But rather, why is it popular? To help us answer this, let's take a step back. Way back. In fact, to 2010 when TypeScript was first created. It was a simpler time. Building for the web was different. Libraries like jQuery, MooTools, and Dojo dominated discussion. Vanilla JavaScript was nowhere close to what it is today. This was pre-ES6, pre-ES5, and even ES4 had just failed to reach a consensus amongst the TC39 committee, in no small part thanks to Microsoft's own objections. It was very clear that Doug and Microsoft didn't agree with everything that was in ES4, didn't want to do that big a change. It was deemed risky, it was deemed too much, it was deemed um, the wrong direction. The problem was Microsoft still saw JavaScript as what it was initially intended for, a simple scripting language that was designed to be easy to use by both designers and developers, not a full-blown application platform. Hi everyone, I'm Anders Halsberg, technical fellow in the developer division of Microsoft, and I'm here to talk about a new project of ours called TypeScript. <laughs> JavaScript was really never designed to be a, a programming language for big applications. It's a scripting language. It and yet, here we are, you know, like, somehow, this was 2012, okay? This is effectively the equivalent of a history lesson that ends with a Ligma joke. That's how I feel about this. 2012. JavaScript's never used for big, you know, big applications. Fast forward 10 years, it's used in big applications. <laughs> Damn. It doesn't have static typing, but more importantly, perhaps, it lacks some of the structuring mechanisms that you need. TypeScript doesn't have static typing. Hmm, weird. In large applications like classes and modules and perhaps interfaces. So at this point, what do you do if you're Microsoft? You still have a need to write large-scale web applications, but the platform you're building on is, in their opinion, inherently flawed. One option that was popular at the time was to leverage existing mature developer ecosystems and then compile to JavaScript. Two examples of this were Google's GWT, which leveraged the Java ecosystem, and a project called Script Sharp, which naturally leveraged the C Sharp ecosystem. These projects worked fine, but they didn't grow with JavaScript. Because you wrote your app in a language that wasn't JavaScript, whenever you wanted to leverage anything in the JavaScript ecosystem, you had to either encapsulate it, or worse, not use it at all. So what did Microsoft do? Well, as we know, they decided to build a language on top of JavaScript that allowed them to create the ideal development platform they desired while still benefiting from the broader JavaScript ecosystem. Ideal. You know, there's that word that I, I, I don't think he knows what that word means. We felt that. What if we could strengthen JavaScript with the things that are missing for large scale application development, like static typing, classes, modules. And that's what, what TypeScript is about. Now fast forward to today and most of Microsoft's original objections about JavaScript have been solved. So why do we still need TypeScript? Well, even with all the improvements, there are still some benefits that TypeScript can give us. I do like this right here, modules. If there's ever been a bigger pain in the ass ever in the universe, it has been the current state of modules. ESM, CJS, MJS, to quote Trash Dev, BDSM. I mean, there's just so many different things and all the tooling is just terrible. It's just terrible. Like this is, this, I feel like it's solved nothing. It's it's emotionally it's emotionally bruised me is all that's happened. Every time I still can't use chart JS 4.0 invite. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it happen. Tried to make it happen, couldn't make it happen. TypeScript. Well, even with all the improvements, there are still some benefits that TypeScript can give us. Even though you may have not realized it, types are foundational to everything you do in JavaScript. Ironically, if you've only ever used dynamically typed languages like JavaScript, this may come as a surprise to you. With dynamically typed languages, you don't really think in types. They forgot Lua in here. Lua's it was very beautiful. So with that said, what do we mean when we talk about types? You're probably familiar with the idea of variables being containers for values. Name is a container for the value of Tyler, age for the value of 31, and married for the value of true. Your JavaScript brain is used to thinking this way. What it's not used to is thinking about these containers in terms of their value as well as their type. All right, but why is this helpful? Well, in this example, it's not. 
but normal apps aren't composed of three variables. Instead, you'll often have thousands of variables originating from hundreds of different data sources. This is where dynamically typed languages like JavaScript break down if you're not careful. They make it too easy to introduce bugs by mistakenly referencing variables with the wrong type. You've probably even experienced something like this before. This is the fundamental reason why yep. TypeScript was invented. That example, fundamentally, didn't have an option type. TypeScript expands the feature set of JavaScript by giving the ability to define what a type variable should be when you declare it. Now, name must always contain a value with a type of string, age with a type of number, and married with a type of boolean. Right, so TypeScript is just JavaScript with types. Well, kind of. You can think of TypeScript as a hybrid of a language, linter, compiler, and a documentation tool. First and foremost, TypeScript is a language based on JavaScript. As we've seen, this seems small, but it's critical to TypeScript's success. Because it's based on JavaScript, any JavaScript program is also a valid TypeScript program. This not only means that you can import any JavaScript module and use it in your TypeScript code, but it also means you can gradually adopt TypeScript into your code base. The next feature of TypeScript is that it's a developer tool that val I feel like that step they said is just not that accurate. Has anyone ever tried to just bring on in a little bit of JavaScript into their project? I mean, if you have absolutely no safety whatsoever, then yeah, then that makes sense. That then yes, but if the moment you have strict mode on in anything, you bring so, you can't even like import it. You have to write type definitions for it. It is not a a simple like ah everything's just TypeScript. You're just using JavaScript. It's like well 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 I don't know. Um, yes, of course, I'm playing this faster because, I mean, do we really want to not run this faster? Everyone watches their stuff on 1.5. Come on. Validate your code. You can think of it like prettier ES Lint or even a nice, empathetic friend sitting by your side. Its job is to make your life as a developer a little bit easier. The goal of any kind of validation tool is to increase your confidence that the program you're writing behaves the way it is supposed to and it doesn't have any unexpected bugs. Since TypeScript understands the relationship between the types. They, I mean, technically failed on that one, but okay, that's okay. In your code base, using it well can eliminate entire classes of errors and issues. Welcome to Costco. Powerful. I love you. <laughs> this must be for legal reasons. <laughs> your writing behaves the way it is supposed to, and it doesn't have any unexpected bugs. Since TypeScript understands the relationship between the types in your code base, using it well can eliminate entire classes of errors and issues. TypeScript becomes even more powerful when paired with a compatible IDE like VS Code. As you write your code, TypeScript can give you hints and suggestions about what. See, when people say these things, I just immediately think they don't understand what's happening within their editor. And what I mean by this is that VS Code isn't doing what they think it's doing. VS Code is running what is referred to as a language client that is using the language server protocol to communicate to a language server. The language server is doing all the hard work for you. This is one of those strange moments in life where you hear it all the time and people don't realize that the reason why this works in every editor is because they're, it's just TS server underneath the hood. Now user methods exist on your objects or what types you should use for functions parameters. It can autocomplete your code as you write. It can warn you when you use a function incorrectly or if you write an object that is missing required property. It can even remind you to return a value from a function if you accidentally forget. Sorry, I, I misheard that. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely misheard that. If you write, it can warn you when you use a function incorrectly, or if you write an object that is missing a required property. It can even remind you to return a value from a function if you accidentally forget to. Since TypeScript understands Checkmate Atheist. All right. Understand your entire code base at once. You can do all of this across file boundaries without having to jump from file to file. Next, TypeScript is also a compiler. It can transform TypeScript and JavaScript code to support different features for older JavaScript engines. Finally, TypeScript is a great way to document your code and communicate with the rest of your team. Coming into a brand new code base can be daunting, especially if you don't know how all the pieces connect together. Especially if every function you call returns to you flat POJOs and you have to inspect every single item inside of it to try to guess what type it is. Like imagine if you had like named types coming out of functions. I don't know. Perhaps that perhaps that'd be just a different experience. I don't know. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's you know. Maybe some people uh, you know some, some people like uh, just a big raw list of properties. Type annotations remove the guesswork in figuring out how a program works and serves as a guide for anyone trying to work in your code base. For example, your code base might use a specific shape of an object as a parameter to a function. Without TypeScript, you would either have to write an API documentation or worse, write comments next to the function definition explaining how the options work. This gives current you, future you, and all developers who use your code elsewhere confidence that you're using it correctly. It's easy to think that TypeScript is simply a way to add types to JavaScript. And though that's true, it's so much more. In 2007, Jeff Atwood famously said, any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. 15 years later, that quote probably needs a slight update. You know, I think they really missed what made TypeScript so good. They kind of like they 
he kind of did talk about it for a brief moment. He never actually told you why TypeScript 1, which was the box art, but really and truly why TypeScript 1 can boil down to a singular point, and that's it. It's just one single point. Does anyone know? Anyone want to take a guess? Come on. There's 944 of you. One of you must know the answer to this. I wouldn't say types. Microsoft is a vendor? No. Type safety? No. No. Not because of static typing. No, 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 no. Marketing? No. No. Microsoft? Microsoft is half the answer. Yes. Types? LSP? Let's go! The reason why TypeScript won the entire time was because of the LSP. When people actually opened up their editor and got correctly values in there, it, sure, it was the typing, but it wasn't the typing by itself. It was the LSP. The LSP, the invention of the LSP, and its ability to be awesome is what made TypeScript win. There is no other answer because if you use JavaScript and you've gotten a taste of autocomplete, you just like can never go back. Like, you can never go back, ever. What's an LSP? Do you guys not know what an LSP is? Holy cow. Okay, so let me give you a quick diagram of what an LSP is, okay? Let's just go uh, Excalidra. All right, so uh, L LSPs are really easy. I need to figure out how to create these really easy. Okay, so you have your, let's say you have your editor, Vim. Now, because you know, your chat, your chat, uh, just chat doing chat things. You know what I'm talking about? The Your editor is going to have something called an LC, a language client. And then you're going to have something called a language server, an LS. And in betwixt these two items is going to be something known as a language server protocol. It is a series of JSON messages that are passed from your editor, or your editor will pass a piece of information, say your file you're currently working on, the build file, the package.json, to the language client. The language client will communicate via the language server protocol to the language server. The language server will then be able to take that piece of information, compile everything around it, and take that and walk it back and send updates right here. That is what is happening. That is why this thing is so dang popular. What did Lee Rob have to say here? I missed it. Anyways, so there you go. It's the language server protocol. That's the truest reason why this thing took off as fast as it did. Because the moment you had a taste of this, you could never go back to JavaScript. Right? You could just never, ever, for any reason, come back with that. And who came up with this? Microsoft did. Microsoft did. So the nice part about Microsoft is that the moment they came up with the language server protocol, an open standard for everybody used to make the world a better place, the first thing they did was like, wow, we've created something open and beautiful. This is amazing. People, we've done something for developers for the sake of doing it. Oh my goodness, aren't we great people? And everyone's like, yeah, Microsoft, you're so good. And they're like, look, and it's even VS Code. Look, VS Code works with it. And everyone's like, yeah, oh my goodness, Microsoft, so kind. This is so good. And then Microsoft almost immediately within a moment when, oh, by the way, HTML, uh, HTML language server. Uh, if you use that and you aren't using VS Code, we reserve the right to sue your ass. And so there you go. That is how it happened. Large sexy primogen. That's actually the technical answer. You're you're absolutely correct. So there you go. That is what Microsoft did. And then right after they got done doing it, they were like, oh man, we don't want people to think we're like terrible, right? And everyone's like, yeah. They're like, oh, by the way, Pylance, if you use that and you don't use it inside VS Code, we reserve the right to sue your ass or your company you work at. And you're like, Microsoft, why would you do, why would you create a world in which could be great? Just to, dude, Microsoft, all they do is EEE. -E -E. That's all they do. Absolutely every single time. They create something only to take advantage of it. <laughs> and now, you know, oh man, oh man. But how can NeoVim get around this? They can't. Well, I mean, people do, but if you do, you, you reserve the right of getting sued, by the way. So don't do that. Don't use these inside NeoVim. You should never do that because you don't want to hold you or your company liable for what's happening on right here, okay? It's like the reverse of what Facebook did with React. Yeah, it's like the, it is what the, it's the reverse of what Facebook did with React. There you go. And there you go. That, my friends, 
is why TypeScript won. 